Etarians, AM is lucky to get the most talked about band hailing from Dubai. The band that was recognized for a lot of achievements, such as recognition from Virgin Megastores and Psychogenesis, was also one of the top 10 death metal albums in 2011 by many websites and magazines. So here we are with the band members now. This is Remy and we have Barney over here. Yeah. So good evening guys and welcome to our country Singapore. So how was your trip and how do you like our country so far? Well, it's been nothing but great. It's a beautiful country, and um, we've been. This is our third uh, date on this tour, so yeah, we've been a good trip so far. You know, we've been been to Bangkok before this, and uh, in Nepal, it's been going great. So hopefully, uh, you know, looking forward for the show as well. All right, yeah. cool. So, what has Nerve Cell been up to lately? Uh, well, we're on a current Asia tour for 2012. Um, we've started um, touring only in the second half of this year for the album because the last year was a really busy year for us. Metallica support, Marble Angel, European festivals. So, um, you know, we, we, were, we wanted to focus more on, at, uh, in our region this year. That's why we started a Middle East tour in the summer of June and July. And um, we're taking a little break now doing Asia. We go back uh, November, December to do more Egyptian and Lebanese shows and um, start writing the next album All right. next year. Cool. So. We have reviewed your current album, Psycho Genocide, and it's doing well in many places and you're coming up with a lot of tours as well. So what drove you guys to this album and have you encountered problems while recording it? Um, honestly, you know, this album just was our second, you know, album that we had to do for, you know, because uh, we were signed to Life Force Records and Spellbound Records for the Middle East. So it was just um, our second full length. We had you know, a full length before that and an EP and a demo, so it was just uh, you know a great experience. We had to write it. Actually, we had to write it in between doing shows, so we're kind of you know busy with that. It was a little bit of uh, a challenge. Yeah, um, there was nothing you know that we you know but was really really difficult in that period. Other than that, just having the time just to write it, you know, finding it the right you know period of time. And it was excellent, you know. The experience was great. We we locked up ourselves in the, in the studio for like a month, just to get in the mood for just pre-recording it, you know. Mm. It was great. Yeah, we we were we had to record it in a month. That was also a challenge. Yeah, it was pretty you know smooth experience. If you want to recall, what's your experience? Well, we did we did it ourselves really this time around. Uh, Rami was uh, you know more or less behind the desk producing it. I was there with him practically slept in the studio. Um, it was done in um, bits and pieces in Dubai and um, Doha with the guitars and the tracking of the vocals and the bass uh, mixed in, uh, mixed in uh, Poland and mastered in Poland and before all of that what I just said it was the drums were done by Dave Hilly of Sarcoptic back in Australia so it was like a good six months of work but you know we're really happy with the result and like you said the feedback has been immense so far. And now we're in Asia, which is just perfect. Yeah. So, like, what? How do you guys compose? I mean, do you hum a riff, or is there like a main composer in the band? Um, we both, you know, write the riffs. It's mostly come up with the guitar riffs, you know, or ideas, or a theme of a song, or whatever, and just you know meet up and like. I recently moved out from Dubai, so I have to fly more. Than I I live in Qatar, which is. In, it's country next to Dubai, so I have to fly down more often. Or the, you know, Barney will meet up with me. We might, we have to f like meet up uh, or do it on the internet sometimes. You know, it's it's, it's like that. And then you know, the, the, so we build a skeleton for the song. You know, and just put everything else, the vocals and drums and everything. So we we basically work on the on the main um, core of the song first. Yeah. That's really cool. So, we've heard the album and um, we really enjoy the Middle Eastern riffs. So, what inspired you guys to come up with these riffs? It's very, it's very natural approach. Uh, we lived in the Middle East all our lives, so it's around us, the ambience, the, the local culture that plays, and the, the people. Everything around us really is nothing, nothing intentional the way we write our music. And sometimes um, our friends or fans have pointed out to us. Uh, subconsciously how we write like when we when we sit down and jam we just we play what to us sounds heavy and catchy but our friends have sometimes sat down and slowed down the riffs for us and said 
harm the ref and they've, they've, they've made it out to us more obvious that it has oriental passages and hints where we don't really intentionally write. But I think that's a very natural approach and um, we obviously in this day and age have to try and find something that's unique. So we try and stand out. You know, we're obviously influenced by thrash and death metal bands, but um, we also, I think, have a, a groove factor in our soul where if, if you hear another band playing a riff, you'd be like, that's something we would write. And, like, we, we know we've, we have, we found something in there in the last 12 years that we've been a band, so uh, it's, it's, it's cool that you would hear that. Like, it's not something we sit down and focus or intend to at any point. We've never done that. We like to have fun with what we do, and we're obviously influenced by death metal bands like Morbid Angel and Suffocation and Deicide, um, thrash metal bands, Testament, Slayer, Pantera, like the old school wave. But we're trying to write something original too here and there, and Rami's kind of solos, you know, has hints of that, the, the oriental passages. Okay, so Nerve Cell received a plague of recognition from Virgin Megastores, you know, earlier this year. And Psychogenocide was also cited as one of the top 10 death metal albums of 2011. So do you think your achievement is based on education? So what, what do you guys think about education, you know, for metal hits or actually anyone generally? Honestly, we, I mean, personally, like, we didn't expect that this album will be, you know, getting us to the where, you know, where it is now, which is great, honestly, you know, like, to, to think of an album that sells as much as any other, you know, international, like, level, and Virgin Megastore, which is, which is the main, you know, music store in the region, that's really something that we feel very, very happy about and, you know, I'm humbly proud about. So, there's something great. We, we, we knew about this, um, actually on tour, we were in Mor with Morbid Angel in Europe, and uh, we found out about it, like, wow, this is really, like, great, you know, like, we can't wait to, we came down to Dubai and we had, like, a, a you know, celebration for it. They gave us, a tro like, two different um, um, uh, trophies. Great. And the, the education part, I mean, to feel that we're actually influencing others and showing that Metals actually can go somewhere, even though this is not our target, like going into positions or hits or whatever, you know, but to, to be able to do it and to achieve it actually, and it's something really, you know, makes us really, really happy. Because at the end of the day, we put so much effort into this and to, you know, get something like that, it's pretty awesome, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, have you encountered like situations of organizers that rip you off? I mean, I'm sure starting out, a lot of us have gone through that. So do you guys encounter that? At this point of time, we know how to deal with these kind of promoters. So, you know, but of course, you know, everyone went through that, you know. But I don't, it sucks if it happens. But we try to find out from the beginning if the person is serious or not, you know. And to, to, But I don't recall any recent instances. Uh, it's, it's probably not worth talking about. It's just, it happens and... Um, you always take the good from it, you know. You play, you play, you play wherever you can. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to play in like such corners of the world, like Australia, Egypt, and um, where else? Nepal last week, and Sri Lanka. So, you know, you, you always deal with situations like that. But um, you learn to put contracts in there, and you you learn things as yes. management and what that plays. And if you really need a management, even like. We've been managing for the last four years, but the first seven years we did it independently. So um, there comes a level and a status when you get a label, they, they totally um, get yourself in traps, which mm. is what you're asking about, yeah. But we've been there, but you know what, it's all fun. It's all good. And we learn, and we learn to be better and professional, and I hope everyone else does. And if there's anyone who's done us wrong, we recommend all the bands not to work with them as well. So, we don't yeah. really mention names, so yeah. it's not going to affect anyone. But that's some really great advice for any bands out there who might be getting potential uh, situations. So, um, do you guys involve in any political movements in your country? No. What about, like, lyric lyrically? What do you guys write about? You know, the lyric theme is basically um, a mix of um, humanitarian topics, um, you know, um, basically talk about the realities of what's happening in the world in, in a very uh, intelligent way. If I may say, or very, we don't really, it's not really targeted to any like specific, um, you know, it's, it's general, it's about the world. And what mostly James writes, so lyrics, he's, he's very intelligent, and he, he writes the words in a very philosophical way, very poetic way. It's, it's more of a, you know, like a, like a, like a experience when you listen to it than an actual, like, 
you know, straight off meaning it to something. But it's not, it's nothing, you know, political or anything. We just, we just talk about what's happening in the world, you know, the, the war, the, um, the hardships, the difficult, um, it's, it's very also humanitarian in a way, so. Mm. Yeah, that's like about it. Most of the songs are like that. All right, cool. So, was it hard to start a metal band in your country, you know, in Dubai? Because, you know, being underground and all, and how the government is very strict religiously. I don't know, it's hard to say we're underground anymore because when a big corporation like Virgin puts you up there as a, the UAE's best-selling metal act, and you, as, as cool as you want to sound, you can't because, you know, it's, it's really nice to get accredited like that. But, um, you know, we, 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 we play, probably play extreme music, but we like to play to everyone and uh, anywhere. So, I mean, this, we've always been underground because the Middle East is not really known for metal music, but... You know, we'll, we'll take up any offer as long as it's the fans are going to come out and appreciate it. And we've never compromised with our music. We still play extreme music. We played Rock and Ring, for example, which is a really commercial festival in Europe. So um, if, if, if you ask, is the underground scene growing and stuff? It definitely is in the Middle East. There's a whole wave of bands now coming out from there. So, um, yeah, I guess to some we're underground, but I guess it, people get pissed off if we, if we do things like that as well. So can't please anyone, but we're an extreme metal band. We've never really, you know, what, what do you call them, sell, uh, sold out or anything. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of bands in the middle, like, let's say Dubai or the Middle East, they want to, um, they want to do the, 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 some of them want to do it the easy way, you know. And to play extreme metal is not the easiest way because extreme metal is not commercial in that part of the world. So we're doing it 100% out of, out of our own will, you know, out of passion and fun, we enjoy it. So at this, po at this point, it's still there, which we're really happy, it's no like, we're actually like, signed, we have you know distribution and we tour, so that's what we're looking for, you know, just spread our music. And to be in Dubai, it's definitely easier than other parts in the Middle East, so that helps, you know, we gotta, we gotta say it helps, because Dubai is a very, um, um, you know, commercial, open-minded open commercial city, where all types of music is there, and metal is part of it, so. It's good. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So, this question is directed to Rami. Tell us about your business in Qatar, Shredder Planet. Oh, yeah. you heard about it. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a new, it's a new thing. You know, I've, um, the idea just started because um, I, have, I, have I have a good friend of mine that we've been friends for a long time, actually, more than 15 years. You know, and he, he, he was, he, he's, He's done a couple of intros for us. Like, he worked in our intro songs, and then both preaching venom and psychic genocide. His name is Rami Azizio, and um, we just thought, you know, like uh, we just need to start a musical instruments business, and it was uh, the first online, online like e-commerce kind of thing in, in in the region, and it's, it started growing, become became a shop. So we have like agencies for so many companies and. Yeah, it's going well. It's like aside from the band, so I do that. So it's some. It's good. To, it's also in music, so I enjoy it. So you guys sell instruments, yeah, and we are agency. Like we have agencies of music instruments in Qatar. All right. So if you guys want any instruments and you want any, just yeah. check out Shredder Planet. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys formed in twenty thousand as one of the first few bands to emerge from Dubai, and you guys started as a hardcore band, right? So, what made you change to death metal? That's a very funny uh, question. Uh, we, we, well, yeah, we started as a hardcore band. Um, but, um, always had death metal influences. Like, exactly as you said, um, we started the band in 2000 with a bunch of high school friends. And um, we really didn't have musicians who could play the technical side of things when you play death metal. And um, being fans of death metal, we would cover, we would try and cover death metal songs. So we would pretty much like have one or two originals in our sets in the first two years, but also cover like obituary and like hate breed and stuff at the same time. But as you moved on and as we started writing new stuff and new members came in the band, um, you know, it got more serious and we, we started focusing more on original material and better musicians came in, obviously. Uh, no disrespect to any of the old members, but... You know, we wanted to progress and we wanted to play stuff that we wanted to play and not being limited by having musicians in the band who could not, you know, go that extra notch in terms of technical aspects and going full on board with playing as a death metal band or an extreme metal band. But yeah, we did have hardcore influences and we still do, 
but uh, we're more in the death metal vein now, in the more extreme metal genre. Um, James still today listens to Hatebreed and always pushes us to cover a Hatebreed song, but we're like, no. You know, we would for fun if it's a party or something, but like, we have... Yeah, I mean, you see like, all the extreme metalheads love Hatebreed, so definitely that one of, the, one of the early influences we had, and even like a lot of other independent hardcore bands like Earth Crisis and you know, a band called Narcissist that I used to like, and Zeo and stuff like... So yeah, I mean, we were a hardcore band, but always had death metal influences, that's so, to make it clear. That's the case. Okay. So, um, do you think Human Chaos, do you consider it as like a door of hope for Nerve Cell? Human Chaos has uh, been like our baby, you know? Like, we, we worked really, really hard on that EP because at that time, no bands actually started, you know, no, no one released any EP in, that, in, the, like in Dubai, like a full-on, you know, um, five-song, kind of like, like a big... They used to have demos, you know, like a song oh. or two or something. So we did the five song, we decided to do a five song. Um, that was the reason for us to actually uh, to help us, you know, get reviews and some some sort of um, opening for to, for the rest of the world to actually know us. Because I remember like this CDD was to really literally like spread out everywhere, you know, and, and because of that AP we got big opportunities in Australia and in Europe. It, it was, it was, it's awesome, you know, and, and it kept us going. It just made us uh, realize that, you know, people do like our stuff and it, it's, it's really, you know, it's really an important aspect in our history, like this EP, definitely. So you guys should definitely check out that album, Human Chaos. So, um, okay, with the killing going on in the Middle Eastern countries, is there a message from Nerve Cell to the world leaders? I don't know if it's a message, but it's like our impression of it, you know. I mean, uh, we mm -hmm. have a song called Nation's Plague, which pretty much says what what you put on TV and you watch and you, what you take off it. You know, we would see our impression of it. We're just talking about um, a moment in time that's, that's happened or that's happening, and we're singing about it, um, not taking sides, mm -hmm. but just our, our impression of it. And what you take off it is, you, we don't want to stand out as a political band because there's many puppets out there to do that. But... We kind of like just, we're, we're civilians and we're very, very much a humanitarian band and sing about social unrest in general. And Sepultura, the bands of Sepultura have done that for years, you know, before. But we live in the Middle East, you know what I mean? We're not like Slayer sitting in L.A. singing War Ensemble, you know what I mean? Like, we're there. So we have friends then, we have families who live in these day-to-day -day situations. So it's our impression of it and our, you know, sort of, um, how would you say, um, we, need, you know, the reality is that we we live as close to it, but we're not really living in it. You know, it's not. It's like Dubai and, and that part of you know the Middle East is 100% st uh, safe and you know stable and everything. But we see it, and we know that it's, it's a lot of friends and families are around us, and it does influence you. Know, you know, gives us a motive. But it's not really. I, I, we can't say it's it's a, a main tar you know influence. Mm -hmm. It's a part, you know, some, some way partial. For us, it's mo mostly uh, musical-driven, you know, than a message. But, you know, for what's happening lately, it's been crazy. We yeah. it's, it sucks, you know. It's, it's, sometimes it's o in the media, it's over, you know, exposed. Okay. And it's, it's sometimes they put some wrong information, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, that's also, that also sucks, because people think something's going on which... You know, where there's nothing, but whatever. You know, like for us, we just—it's music. So we're not—we're not really politicians or anything. But we are actually as close to it as any other. Like, I don't think you know other metal bands, like you said, you know, from other parts of the world would realize as, as much as us. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. I think we just have to ask this question: analog or digital sounds? Oh man. <laughs> if, if we can if, if we can go analog now like do our own new album analog yeah well, it's not easy anymore Prefer analog, you know? sure yeah, yeah. but if you look at all the albums that have come out now they sound crystal crisp and um, there's, the, there's a downfall to it obviously because you got to bring that to the stage yeah. and that's where you lose fans instantly more than you gain them so I mean, for the genre of replay, I think it's best to just be analog and sound as real and efficient in the studio and to replicate that live on stage. It's not really a challenge, but it's, a, it's more of a thrill and something you look forward to doing. So we try and stay away from the whole um, 
plastic sounding full produced perfect crisp album because you know it's live death metal always sounded better to me at yeah. least because that's where your aggression is you know 10 times more um you know in your face so we get that in the album and we want to make that same sort of feel come out live 10 times full you know what i mean so i think um i think you have to sort of be on the on the level of the industry what the, what the labels expect you to sound production wise which means a little of that you know the crystal clear crisp amazing production but it's also good to have some natural feel in there which we try and what's which is what we try and do henceforth we recorded the album ourselves for those purposes so do you guys collect vinyls or cds or even tapes collect you know i don't collect but i do buy you know i always buy bands that i really love like i i keep up to date with them even even though if it's if i don't like listen to the album i just grab it and sometimes I'm happy, sometimes disappointed, it depends. But he does collect sometimes more than me. Yeah, yeah that's a nice way of putting it. I, I do. But I don't collect vinyls. I mean, CDs, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, like, I like supporting music. I like fans. So it's a hobby for me to collect music, whether it's t shirts or CDs or um, just general, general merchandise, really. As long as you like the band, you support them. You know what I mean? Like, you, d you can download it to test if you like it. But if you like it and you don't buy the music and you still say you're a fan, and then yeah, well, then we can talk about this. Board the band, go for the shows, buy the tickets, buy a t shirt, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. You heard it from him. Yeah. So, can I ask you guys a potentially sensitive topic? You know, can we ask why did uh, Louis Rando leave the band? Um, he did not leave. And he, I mean, we, we don't have a drummer, like a stable drummer. So, we always work with session drummers. Like, oh. we always session drummers. Now, just like um, recently, on, like we've been having Kevin from Benighted for the past, I think, two, two years. years. Yeah. Um, the reason is that we we can't, we don't just couldn't find a drummer, you know. So we keep sessioning, and wherever we go, for example, if we go to different areas, like whoever's free, because they all they're all busy, they have own bands, mm -hmm. they tour with us. And basically, Louis was has been being busy, has been being busy for a long time now, and he's actually playing with a Singaporean band. He's joined the Impiety. So oh. he's part of a party, you know. Yeah, but we're still friends. We still, hey man, you want to tour? You know, it's still there. It's, it's nothing official. Like no one to leave, or he's still there. But we we've been working with uh, Kevin from Benighted, the French mm -hmm. metal band, and it's been going great. He's a great drummer. Yeah. Okay, that that's cool. At least it was like a very mutual kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So in Singapore, we used to have pongs and hardcore kits and metal hits um, that come for gig organized by locals. And our scene is mostly based on support. And now too much, they say that there's too much genre and it's killing the scene. So how was the scene in Dubai like in the beginning and how is it like now? Wow, that's, that's crazy. You know, it's, been, it's been good. I gotta say, back in the day, it was great. We, it was Based on local support, it was small. It was a community. It just many different types of bands, not necessarily metal. There's so many different genres. A group of like because of, in Dubai there's so many um, so many nationalities, different nationalities. So bands form a lot. You know, like these groups of people in college or schools, they're studying at that period of time. They make bands. These bands play together. You know, pop rock, metal, thrash, whatever it is. And a lot of these bands actually stopped. You know, doing that because. There's also a tendency that when they, when they finish studying, they leave the country to oh. relocate or either, you know, one of the band members leaves or back go, goes back to his home country, whatever. So this band actually is on hiatus or doesn't do any shows anymore. So that, that happened more and more, you know, so the scene became a little bit, I don't know what's the word, but, you know, smaller, let's say. Um, and then it caught up again in t around 2004, 2005 with a festival in Dubai called Desert Rock Festival. That was like the only festival in Dubai that brought metal bands, you know, like really good metal bands. Sepultura, Machine Head, Motorhead, um, so many bands, you name it. And the, the scene started going, you know, building, up, again. building up and more bands started actually forming to actually try and play in that festival, if you believe it or not. I don't know, it's, 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 it's seasonal. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's what I feel. Like recently, it's good, but it's, it's been enough, you know, straight phase, I think, you know. 
But it started, like you said, with uh, punk bands and mm. hard rock and grunge bands and metal bands. Song. Yeah, all DIY, uh, building the stage, playing on it, and everyone having a good time coming together. And um, now I think it's a little more difficult because uh, when you have, like you said, desert rock going on and so many international bands coming in, they kind of like, um, they've kind of become picky. So it's hard to please everyone, I guess, but I guess every scene has that. So, yeah. It's, it's still good, though. It's still good. We're not saying it's bad. But, like, for us, like, Nerve Cell plays in UAE, where we are based in from day one, just once or twice a year, because we want people to come back and really have that experience to see us and not get bored. So, like, I try and do shows myself, just bringing international bands or there to keep the scene alive. And that's, that's really the problem. Uh, unlike in Asia, you guys have gigs quite often every month. Consistency not being there. Month there's a band coming in, but... In the Middle East, it's, it's once every six months. That's the, that's the way it works. So with that, can people automatically fall out because all their friends are out clubbing and you're wearing a Slayer shirt at home on YouTube and you're the, like, kind of like the loser. Um, so, so you have to, you know... Like, we, we stuck to it because we get off playing music and we, we get along well. We, we don't talk about everyday lives, like, things. Like, we, 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 all we do is talk about music or play music. So we still survived and somehow... You know, made it made it through this far, but really that's just, that's the problem that there's no consistency of gigs going on, and like you said, bands breaking up because members flying out or leaving the country or finishing college and then going to get jobs elsewhere. So it's hard being a band in the Middle East, really, because you don't have frequent gigs and platforms to play. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sure we've all encountered like. Um superstar attitudes like in some bands and like what advice can you give to people who who give this kind of rock star attitude you know I whenever I see that I'll just you know that dude wants attention so just don't give him attention that's the best thing if that guy or whoever band member is doing it for attention just people like most most bands like in, in, in extreme metal are down to earth they're cool you know but we've met some big bands like in some festivals that you will never see them. You know, they're not even out there hanging out or doing anything. So, you know, let them do their thing. But definitely it's not a good thing for any band to have any sort of rock star attitude or any, like for them to reach a level where they think that, oh, you know what, I'm waiting for this moment. You know, this kind of mentality is where you're know, doing it for some other reason than music itself. So that's what I think. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. <laughs> so, just one more question before we end off this interview. What is up next for Nerve Cell? What do you guys plan to do after this? We have a lot of things like on the works. Um, just waiting to confirm things. So far, we are touring now in Asia, and we're going to come back, and we're going to continue our second part of the Middle East tour, because we did our first part in June, and we did the three countries, and now we're going to continue. The reason is because we couldn't... We tried, of course, to have consist consistent shows in the Middle East, but because it's difficult. Okay, after, so uh, yeah, after the Asia tour, going to go back home, probably, st I, I, I assume, start writing the next album. So either I go to Qatar or Rami comes down to Dubai for a couple of days. Then come December, we want to do, like I said, the second half of the Middle East tour. Um, we did the Middle East tour part one in Bahrain, Qatar, and Dubai. Again, Qatar being the first metal gig ever, uh, which was a good accomplishment for us. Again, we did it ourselves, so there's a bunch of shows was there, a bunch of one-offs. Um, going back to the studio, writing the next album. Come 2013, there's talks about going to Europe again for early, early, Jan, early Jan, Feb 2013, and then also a U.S. tour that we're, we've never been to the U.S., so we're trying to like really aim on that for the first quarter of 2013. So yeah, a lot of gigs, a lot of tours, and in between writing the album is the main focus right now when we go back. All right, thank you guys so much for the really great interview. Is there anything you guys would like to say to your Singapore fans? It's a, it's a long time coming to play here. We've done um, heaps of interviews with Singapore magazines. And what's the one I did two days ago? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was a newspaper. But, like, yeah, but over, the years, over the years, we've done a lot of um, Asian and Singaporean well, interviews to come here, and we've always said we'd love to. They ask us all the time to. So now 
the opportunity has presented itself. And um, Creative Chaos Volume 2, we're going to see you there and raise some hell. Yeah! All right, thank you so much. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, of course. I, um, I'm so looking forward to play the show tomorrow, first and foremost. And uh, we've heard a lot of great things about the, the scene here. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I also heard about the country. You know, everyone, all my friends who come here to visit, they're like, dude, it's beautiful. And actually, a couple of months ago, I was talking to a friend, like, he, he's, he's living here, and he's telling me, like, he should come down. He's like, the only way for me to come here is to do a show, and here we are. So I'm pretty stoked. Looking forward for tomorrow. And, you know, you guys have been doing a great job, you know, supporting the scene. So keep it up. And uh, all the best. Madeline, metal, metal or, or die. die. Update Tay Tay. Yeah! 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 Thank you very much. Thanks, Good to give you a go. Apparently, it's really funny. I don't know. Like this? I didn't know.